So one of the many things that I've noticed over the years of just being an iOS developer is that it gets really difficult to monitor the state of your application. So for example, if you have a large credit card form, you might have a first name, last name, credit card number, address, and all the stuff that you have to store inside of your application, right? Well, in traditional iOS development, uh, it's really hard to monitor what's going on because you don't have this bindable mechanism. And this is kind of where things like RxSwift and React Coco come into play. And so in Swift UI, what they introduce is a very easy way to bind your variables to your UI elements inside of your form objects. And in today's video, I would like to demonstrate exactly how this works using a very, very little syntax. So before we dive into the code here, uh, I want to give you a quick demonstration of what's possible using this form up here and a list of users down below. So let's say I want to type in a first name here, right? So let's say Tim and Cook. You'll see that I can monitor the application state using a couple of different variables up here. And whenever I create a user, I'm just simply inserting this user into a array of strings. And then that array is actually being monitored by this list down here. Every time I punch in a new user, it's going to automatically add and insert that row into this list below. So A, B, C, 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 and one, two, three, one, two, three. One more time, create a user and everything is refreshed. Uh, something else that I can do is I can empty out this array. And once I do that, all of the rows disappear from that list. And if you think about how you actually do this in standard traditional iOS development, it's actually uh, going to require a lot of code. And that's exactly what we want to avoid. So right now I'm gonna dive into Xcode and show you how to build out this form and then bind all of our variables together so that we can completely monitor the state of our application. All right, so welcome to the coding session for today's video. I went ahead and created a brand new single view application inside of Xcode 11, and I made sure to check the Swift UI checkbox. That's kind of why my application looks like this. We have the scene delegate and content view. I'm back on my old Hackintosh computer, so I don't have the canvas open because I am currently inside of, let's see, Mac OS 10.14.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this guy inside of the left simulator. Uh, luckily, it's really fast to refresh the UI now inside of Xcode 11. Okay, so enough talk here. Uh, let me go ahead and build out the form for you right here. And then I'll start inserting some users and monitoring uh, some states inside of my application through the state and uh, bindable uh, variables. Okay, so first thing I'll do is right here, you see hello world, you can start modifying this guy and run your application again. It'll quickly change inside of the app. So first thing I'll do is I'm going to say navigation view and inside of this view, I'm gonna pop in all of these objects inside of the UI. And what exactly do I mean? Well, I'm going to create some kind of text field first. So this guy is just some kind of text field. Uh, for the two parameters right here, I think I want to use the placeholder one instead. So placeholder, this will be uh, first name. Uh, the first parameter called binding, you want to bind it to some kind of state variable. And this way you can monitor exactly what the state of your app is. So you want to declare it using the state syntax like that and var, and I'm going to say first name and just set it to a blank string. And right here, I'm going to take the first name and in order to access a bindable, you don't want to say dollar sign and first name just like that. Okay, this is my UI so far. I can run it. Uh, hopefully I can run it, but you'll need a ending parentheses at the very end here, hopefully. Uh, one thing that I always trip up on is for these placeholder text, you want to include it as a text element like that, and your application should fire right now. So you see we have a first name right here, and you can type in some stuff. So, you know, get rid of the... Thing right there and just type in the text inside of that text field okay so our ui doesn't look all that great just yet now let me fix it up a little bit here by including this instead of a v stack so you know i don't really want to explain how a v stack works hopefully this is pretty self-explanatory i'm going to say list like that and say text uh, empty a row just to see if i can get this going and let's see, we have our text field up here and our list is down below. Uh, last thing I'll do is I'll include this V stack with a navigation bar title text and let's say credit card form. And I should be kind of ready to get going here. So that's my title and that's my empty list right below. Okay, so building out this guy is a little bit tricky because it involves a lot of padding and a lot of different 
uh, UI elements to configure. So maybe I'll do this really quickly. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll include this inside of a, another uh, VStack and I'll copy this, paste that in here and let's see, paste another one and let's maybe create a button as well. So a button looks like this. So a button gets that, the action, hit enter, the label, hit enter. And right here I'll say text and this will be my create user button, uh, create user. And the action I'll just leave nil for now. So that is a VStack. You can run it and you'll see your elements kind of aligned up like that. Uh, to give something a background color like this gray here, you can simply do this. So background and say color dot gray and that'll give you your gray color. So that's your gray color here and your text fields are somewhere inside of there. Now, because I need some padding values for the entire UI to look correct, I'm going to wrap this entire thing inside of another VStack. So, you know, this is just what you have to do instead of Swift UI right now. I'm going to say padding and let's say 12. And I think this is going to look okay. We have that. Uh, these text fields right here, you can include it uh, using a background color of white. So let's see, background and color dot white looks okay. I'll run this again and obviously you have to configure these uh, UI elements with these uh, UI uh, background colors to get everything to work out correctly. Uh, you see how the height of this thing is very, very short, right? Well, what you can do is you can use a group instead and wrap this guy inside of a group and I'll just do that. And what I'll do is instead of using the background color of white for the text field, I'll put it on the group instead. And then for the padding value of the text field, I'll say padding of uh, something like 12. And you know, I've been playing around a lot with how to construct a better UI. And basically this is how you achieve this look here. Uh, if you want the rounded corner radius of this guy, uh, you're going to have to clip this thing right here. Let's say clip shape and let's say round, uh, round rectangle. So a rectangle, this guy comes with a corner radius and I'll give it a value of five. And so that's kind of what my application is going to look like. I'll paste that in here and I'll use the last name. So this guy, the placeholder will be a last name. And now I think I should be able to remove that guy. And I'll get two text fields up here, the first name and last name looking, you know, pretty nice <laughs> if I have to say so myself. Uh, if you want to add a shadow, you're, you're seeing a shadow there, but you know, you're not exactly uh, seeing it as obvious as you can see here, let's see, shadow, give it a radius of five. And you know, we'll do the same thing down here. Okay, last thing you probably want to do is for the button, you might want to configure this guy as something that looks a little bit nicer. So for the actual button below, which is this entire component, this widget down here, uh, you can wrap this entire thing inside of a group. So what I mean is I'm gonna say group like that, and for the text instead of there, I'm going to say that in padding of value 12. And for the group, I'm going to use a background of color dot blue. So we'll see what this looks like at the moment. And that's my blue button here. Now, the reason why the text is not showing up is because uh, just by default, these text values, when you put them inside of a button, they automatically uh, take in the color of the parent, which is the natural blue color. So you can just say color and dot white, or I think dot primary works as well. But we're gonna use white for now, and you'll see the text show up like that. Uh, you can obviously modify these guys to have a clip shape as well, and a round rectangle, a corner radius of five. And this guy, if you wanted to give it a shadow, you can do this as well. So I think I'm pretty much done with the creation of the UI here. Uh, you can, you know, think about how you would include the delete user button as well, but basically our UI does that. You can type in text inside of this up here. Uh, you can see that when I'm editing the last name on the bottom, it automatically changes the first name up at the top. And the reason is because uh, the text field for the last name, which is this guy, is automatically binding to the first name right now. So whenever you change this text field, it automatically changes the first name here. And then uh, what it does is it pipes the first name back into the top area. So that's kind of how the binding works. It's really nice. And what I'll do is I'll create a second variable called last name, and I'll use this instead of the first name down here. So again, dollar sign and last name. 
And what you can do now is because you've bounded or binded the text fields to the last name and first name, you pretty much uh, know exactly what the state of your application is in terms of these fields here. So let me just run this again and see what the UI looks like right here. So let's say Tim and let's say Cook, right? Uh, what you can do is I'm going to monitor the state of my application all the way up here in the navigation uh, title area. And the way that you would do something like that is to use navigation. So navigation bar items. And I believe this has a leading. This is just some kind of text view. So let's say a text or maybe let's say H stack. And I'll do this really quickly here. So text is that. And for this, I'll say first. So first name. And then let me try to run this to see what the UI looks like just for now. And at the very top, you have first name, right? So I'm going to say text. And instead of here, I am going to use the value of first name. So we'll have an H stack. And then let me just do this as well to make it a little bit easier to read. So last name. And then this and that. All right. So I'm just trying to monitor what these two values are through the UI. And uh, here's the magic here. We are going to use first name and let's say Tim. And you see up above right here, it is going to reflect all these values that I punch into the actual field. So, you know, that's pretty good. And that's how you bind your UI to your variables, uh, just so that it's very easy to read exactly what's going on. So maybe you can say something like color and dot red. I think that works, so color and dot red. So I'll do this one more time. And let's see, we're going to say, uh, Timmy stole my money. So money is, right? So this is how you monitor your variables. And the last thing you kind of want to do here is whenever you hit this create user button, you want to be able to enter new users inside of this bottom row. So for example, we have A, B, C, and D, E, F, create user. That gets automatically entered inside of this list down here. And so the idea is we want to be able to monitor what's going on with the user's array. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. And so I haven't defined my user's array yet. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Uh, it's very easy. You want to introduce a third state variable. So var and users equals, uh, I'm just going to use a string like this. I think that is going to make sense. So just a blank string array is what this guy is saying. Okay, so you know, blank string array. And then what I'll do with this users array is whenever I am inserting something through this create user button, I'm going to insert it through this action of this button here. So what I mean is I'm gonna say uh, self.users.append and you just wanna use some kind of string. So dummy text for now. And then down below for the actual list, I'm going to monitor what's going on inside of this users array. And the syntax is going to look a little bit weird. So you have to say users, and I believe it's identified by the key path of self. Okay, again, a little bit strange, the syntax here, but uh, what you can also do is you can use dollar sign zero. And I believe this is the correct syntax. The syntax highlighting is coming back, so that's always good news. Uh, figuring out how to, you know, type out the syntax is a little bit hard, but nonetheless, that's what we got to do with Swift UI. Uh, now that my UI is hooked up with this button and the user's array being bounded to the list, what you can do is you can just hit this create user and you're pretty much guaranteed to have your list refresh every time you hit this action now for create user, which again is just appending this dummy text. So, you know, really simple and really easy to make sure your UI reflects the state of your application. And by state, what I'm referring to are these three state variables. Uh, last thing we want to do here is instead of appending the dummy text, you can append the actual first name and last name. So I'm going to say that and that. And instead of here, you just want to say first name and then last name. I think that's the correct syntax, but uh, inside of these closures, you want to say self. So let's fix that here and also here and run again. Uh, notice how quickly it's running inside of these simulators now. It's really nice. Uh, we're going to say, Tim Cook, why are your monitors so expensive? Let's hit the create user and we see that inside of this here. Uh, something else that you can do is whenever you hit this create user, you might want to wipe out the fields right here to make it blank again. 
So A, B, C, and D, E, F, create user. This guy becomes blank, right? So how would you do that? Well, you can go inside of this uh, button action here, and after you perform the appending onto the user's array, uh, you can just simply say self.firstName, set that to blank, and self.lastName, and set this to blank as well. Uh, what this will do is pretty obvious, right? So, you know, A, B, C, and D, E, F, hit the create. This guy is going to be blank up there, and the placeholder text will come back. Okay, so let's hit the A, B, C, and D, E, F, and let's hit that again, and that's my second user. All right, one final thing that I want to introduce here is, you see this button, right? It's kind of grayed out at the very beginning. So, gray button. And the thing with that is, this is actually monitoring how long the strings are inside of the text here. So what I mean is, basically, this button, it has a background color of blue, right? You can actually monitor what happens with the blue, so I'm gonna say that. And let's say one letter will enable that button, right? And then that's kind of what I wanna do right now. And then when you backspace and the string count is zero, it disables the button like that. So let's kind of see how that works. And inside of this group, here is my create user button. So create users right here. And you know, this is the entire button, right? I'm going to use the first name and last name to figure out what the color of my background button needs to be, or this button here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna say this right here, uh, include it in these parentheses because I think it might make your Xcode crash if you don't. So I'm going to say first, uh, first name dot count plus uh, last name dot count. If this is greater than the value of, I think, one and two. So let's use zero for now. And if it's greater than the value of zero, what we can do is we can use uh, the ternary question mark operator as a color dot blue, otherwise color color dot gray. Okay, so this might look a little bit tricky, but let me just remove that and that out of the way. So what you see is at the very beginning of your application, right? First and last name, the count is zero because we have nothing inside of here other than the placeholders. Once you modify any of these fields to be, you know, any type of string, this guy's going to light up to be the blue color. And it's because of this, you know, calculation here. And as you can see, if you modify this back down to zero, uh, you can see that this guy is going to turn back to the color of gray. Uh, the actual calculation is incorrect because you want to enable this button after first and last name is actually uh, the count of greater than zero. So you want to modify this to reflect that behavior. But, you know, this is the basic idea. All right, so that's gonna be it for today's video. Uh, one last thing I wanna say is that for the brand new Swift UI framework and playing around with it for just the past couple of days, I noticed a lot of new improvements that they're introducing inside of the framework itself. So the idea of binding your variables inside of your application comes very easy using the state uh, syntax. There's also something called a bindable object that gets a little bit more complicated and it's also very interesting how it works. So maybe in the next lesson, I'll go over how uh, you write out that type of object. But that's it for today. If you want to download the source code for everything that you saw, you can uh, use the link in the description below and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye bye guys.